Thank you very much. It's great to be here today and be able to participate in the fall 2022 Learning Abroad Fair Week at the University of Utah. My name is Patrick Cheney and I work in the International and Area Studies Office. I have a variety of roles here, but today I'm here to speak about scholarship, specifically a scholarship called the Foreign Language and Area Studies Scholarship. Brief note, it's actually called a fellowship in terms of what language I'll be using today. Federally, this is a Department of Education um, funded opportunity known as a fellowship. Though these terms can be used interchangeably, you'll often hear me talk about it as a scholarship because it's providing money. And often I'm just gonna use the catchphrase of award because it's an award that you'll receive. But in terms of the actual title, it's a fellowship. So I'd be happy to share some information and describe a bit more about what this opportunity looks like and how to apply. I'm gonna share my screen and go through a PowerPoint presentation or a PDF version of that PowerPoint presentation. And my apologies, I'm actually gonna pull up the PowerPoint version. I think that might be easier to share the full screen. One moment, my apologies for the delay. All right, so now that we're here, I'll play from the start. As I just mentioned, FLAS, so the acronym stands for Foreign Language and Area Studies. What that means is, this is a federal award, as I mentioned, it's offered through two centers at the University of Utah, the Center, the University of Utah Asia Center and the Center for Latin American Studies. But as I previously mentioned, it's a Department of Education funded opportunity that we receive as two different centers to be able to provide funding for students studying, undergraduate or graduate students who are studying modern foreign languages and related area studies courses. So I'll in a moment show a list of the eligible languages, but I first wanted to mention that, the background of the award, how the funds are, um, are received as an institution, as the University of Utah. So we're very excited, we're really happy to be able to to share information about this opportunity and hope that more students can apply. So next page, there we go. So as I mentioned, this is the comprehensive list of what we currently offer at the University of Utah that is FLAS eligible. There are languages on this list that have a lot more speakers globally than other languages. Um, it's, it's going to be a, a spectrum of, of size of language and that's that's not necessarily the definition of what is FLAS eligible. Often you might hear a term less commonly taught language. We have an acronym for that, LICTL, L-C-T-L. But what that, what that means is it's languages on campus that not the majority of students end up taking, right? So we respect all language study and all language offerings. But for example, in the Center for Latin American Studies, um, our, our office will not award for Spanish, though we definitely award the, you know, support the study of Spanish language. In this case, we or in this office, we'll be able to award the scholarship for Latin American Studies um, languages to Portuguese, which is on this list, as well as to indigenous languages, Nahuatl and Quechua. It's a variant called the, the Ecuadorian Quechua variant, part of the larger Quechua language family in the, in the Andes. So all of those languages will be awarded. I often tell students, we support Spanish language, I support Spanish language study. There's still opportunities to use your Spanish, such as taking Span uh, Portuguese for Spanish speakers and or in one of the indigenous languages co courses, able to um, understand and be able to translate often into and from Spanish in, in learning different uh, words and concepts. The rest of the languages you'll see on this list are going to be offered from our Asia Center. Even though this isn't a geopolitical definition um, of Asia necessarily, what we're talking about here is a funding opportunity. So this includes Pacific Islands. Um, we can support FLAS for Samoan language. And it also includes um, Middle East languages such as Arabic and Persian. So you'll see on this list a whole variety of other languages you would be able to apply for from the Asia Center. So Chinese, Mandarin, um, Japanese, Korean, Hindi, Urdu, as I mentioned, Persian, also Russian and Vietnamese. I already mentioned Samoan as well. So all these languages you'd be able to apply. So that's the, those are the list of eligible languages. There's a couple different awards you're gonna be able to apply for the same academic year award, either as an undergraduate or a graduate student. The amount of the awards differ 
depending on the undergrad or graduate award you would be applying to receive. And it actually recently was increased by the federal by the Department of Education for graduate students. So now that stipend is going to be listed as twenty thousand dollars for graduate students, where it used to be fifteen thousand dollars. So that's great and something I wanted to mention today. Undergraduate recipients will receive um, up to ten thousand dollars in tuition as a maximum for the academic year. That's going to be the fall and the spring. It's one award for the two semesters. Graduate. Recipients will receive a maximum of $18,000 tuition for the fall and the spring, that one award, the academic year award, and as I mentioned, a $20,000 stipend. And then separately, there's a, there is a, a uniform singular application for the summer awards, whether you are a graduate or undergraduate applicant, and that will be the same quantity of support, which would be maximum of $5,000 for tuition and then a $2,500 stipend. Summer awards are distinct, and that's largely what we're probably going to be um, relating to this week's work here, right, connected to the Learning Abroad Office and Learning Abroad Opportunities. Summer intensive language programs are offered globally in a variety of different countries. Sometimes they're faculty-led programs through the Learning Abroad Office. Sometimes they're affiliate programs. There are also domestic programs. Sometimes students will select and, and study at. And earlier in the pandemic, there were virtual offerings being approved. We're not sure if this upcoming summer, those would be approved again. But generally speaking, the majority of our summer budget will, will be for students who are, are off. Well, it depends year to year, but often much of the summer budget goes to supporting students who travel abroad. So that's a great opportunity to think about. Next, what are the eligibility requirements, right? So if you're studying the language, um, these are the requirements further that you would need to think about to be able to apply. So this is a federal grant. They require that the applicants and recipients either be U.S. citizens or have permanent resident status in the United States. I always take this moment to also mention that this is the restriction or the, the, the limitation in, in parameters for this scholarship, but there are others. And so I just want to pause here for a moment and mention if, if anyone's um, interested, we have a really great center on campus called the Dream Center that publishes opportunities for students regardless of status and often has opportunities specifically for students with status such as DACA. But there, there is a limitation for this scholarship for FLAS. These are the, the requirements of two. Second on this list, there is a requirement that the recipient would be a full-time student when they receive the award. If you're not yet a full-time student, that's okay. You just need to think about when you receive the award, the award period. Would you be a full-time student at that time? And then next, what level are you at? You need to be going into, an applicant needs to be going into the second year level of whatever FLAS eligible language for which they are applying. So a very common pathway, not the only, there's multiple pathways to gain first year proficiency, but one of them, a very common pathway would be, you're taking 1010 of whatever the language is you're studying in the fall. So this semester, so I'm just gonna choose an example. Say a student is taking Vietnamese 1010 right now in fall 2022. That student, if they're advancing and taking in the spring, Vietnamese 1020, they would already be able to apply in our next application due date, which I will explain in more detail in a moment, which will be the end of January, this upcoming January. It's always due on the last Friday of the month. So the due date this upcoming cycle will be January 27th, 2023. And that is the due date for both the summer 2023 awards and or the following academic year, 2023-2024. Meaning if a student, in this case, this an um, example I'm mentioning is continuing Vietnamese 1020, they could already apply for a summer award to travel abroad and study Vietnamese um, at an institution, at a you know institution of higher education, a language institute, somewhere that might be FLAS eligible in Vietnam, for example. Or say you're in Arabic 1010 right now, and you will be continuing Arabic 1020, meaning you're in route to eligibility. You could already apply come January for the University of Utah faculty-led program in Cairo, Egypt, right? And, and apply separately for your learning abroad summer program, but apply to us for FLAS. Our office is the funding opportunity for which you would be applying to support that learning abroad opportunity. If you are a graduate student, you would already be able to apply for first year level studies, meaning you may not have ever studied the language we are mentioned, for which you're applying, 
but you already have advanced proficiency in a related language or a language from a similar region. That would make you eligible to already apply for first year. What are other pathways for eligibility for level? You may not have ever studied formally, but might have connection to the language as a heritage speaker. You might also have, have gained proficiency through an immersion experience, such as living abroad or an immersive experience in communities in the United States as well, practicing the language. In those examples, you would just need to be able to verify that you're ready for second year level study. That might be through a placement test, an official placement test, or through um, an unofficial placement test, but one of the language instructors at the University of Utah verifying that level. So I'm going to move on. This is actually these are actually specific um, requirements from the Learning Abroad Office. You can pause here and read through this information. You'll be able to find it on the University of Utah Learning Abroad website as well as our website. But these are just some reminders about the Learning Abroad application and application fee. And it's also mentioning that if you're going through a program that has um, an agreement with the University of Utah Learning Abroad office, you'll need to make sure you go through the office as well and get that application submitted. The timelines vary. They are all very different depending on language and program as well as competitiveness or, or spatial limitations in the program, right? So for example, if you're interested in the intensive Japanese language program in Osaka, Japan, you'll need to apply much earlier, January or February 15th or even earlier to have a better chance of being able to be accepted into that program. Many of the other opportunities aren't due till April 1st. You may not know yet if you're receiving a FLAS um, scholarship or fellowship for the summer to support your language program at the time when you need to already apply to your program. That is the unfortunate um, incompatibility, I would say, with the timelines, but that just exists not only for our learning, ab learning abroad office, but other programs globally. We have our FLAS timeline that may or may not align exactly when you need to know, but we generally inform students for their summer awards sometime in March. It depends on when the committee is able to meet and get the information um, acquired to make announcements to all applicants. Often March, sometimes it won't be till earlier April. So moving along, what is included in the FLAS application? And I'll conclude here momentarily. So the FLAS application has, it's a holistic approach the committee's gonna take. It has multiple components and you're gonna wanna submit a complete application for the greatest chance of receiving the award, right? And that will include everything that it's gonna request from you. They're going to be looking at a statement of purpose, transcripts, all of your transcripts will need to be submitted from every higher education institution you have attended, two letters of recommendation. You'll also need to submit a FAFSA, though this is not defined as a needs-based scholarship, the committee takes a holistic approach, which will also take note of financial need as one of the many factors. And as mentioned before, the due date is January 27th, 2023. And as a reminder, you are applying, if you're applying for FLAS, for FLAS funding, this is a whole separate application. You need to, on your own, be applying to whatever program for which you are applying for their program, their language study. So a few things just to keep in mind for, for your application, a few recommendations that are very important. The statement of purpose you, is, is actually rather short, 500 words. So I would say read the prompt carefully and follow the prompt as closely as you can. It's gonna ask you what your educational and or career goals are. And it's gonna ask short-term and long-term. So I always tell students to be as specific as possible and try not to use a vague language that would be less memorable and less specific to your truths, to your goals. It's also okay if you don't have exact clarity yet, but still showing the committee that you have a clear understanding of what industry, what field, what type of work you might do, what type of educational pathways you might have to get there. Let them know with specific plans what this could do for you. Even if you're not sure you'll work in that in exact way, you might say, for example, this will serve me in this way with this field. Um, two letters of recommendation. And you wouldn't use that language per se, just giving you an example, but you want to be clear and use specifics. The two letters of recommendation, it is recommended, to use that word over and over, to request one from a language instructor. So someone you've already studied the language for which you are applying. Um, also, another academic letter is best for the second letter from a professor, instructor in any other department, any other field. But ideally, someone that knows that you've explained your, your international interest to the language interest, the regional interest, 
Um, I usually recommend to students that they provide a rough draft of their statement of purpose to their recommenders. That way the recommender has a better idea of what the student is applying for, right? And it will be up to them what they write, but if you provide them with information, it's very helpful. Grades and experience in target language, those are very important. The committee is going to look at what grades you already received. If you haven't formally studied that yet, they're also going to want to see on the application whatever, whatever other experience you've gained for the target language for which you're applying. There is not a minimum official GPA requirement to apply for FLAS, but if a student receives FLAS, they will be um, asked to maintain a minimum of a 3.0 GPA. So that's a line to think about in terms of general eligibility, eligibility the committee is going to be thinking about, though it's not an official line. If you are below 3.0 and are very interested, I would say still apply and, and make a, a, a short note somewhere on your application if you do believe that you would be ready to meet the GPA requirements, the minimum that the committee will be at the class requirements will ask of you. But higher GPA will be more helpful, but it's not the only thing they're gonna consider. Again, they're gonna take a holistic approach for their selection. So I'm gonna skip through a couple more of these slides just to conclude, but these are a couple of good questions to be thinking about, right? How does this language proficiency and area studies knowledge help you in your education career goals? Why are you studying the language? I would say just start brainstorming, writing this out, getting your ideas on paper, constructing um, a bit of a, a bit of a, uh, map, if you will, of the ideas that you want to convey in your statement, and then think about how to construct them chronologically or how you want to present them to be able to, to make, um, to craft the most impactful statement of purpose for your application. One more important thing to note, the transcripts you'll need to re request will need to have your fall 2022 grades, whether or not you're in the language course for the language for which you're applying. Just in general, they want to see the most up-to-date transcripts. So please do not request the official transcripts until after your grades are available for this semester. They're listed being due Tuesday, December 27th. I would just make sure to check in your individual coursework that your grades are present before you request official transcripts from this semester. And again, I'm going to just kind of quickly go through these final slides. You want to be respectful when asking for letters of re recommendation from your recommenders. I would ask them well in advance. As I mentioned, providing a letter is very helpful, a, a draft of your, your statement of purpose for, the, for them to, to understand. Providing that draft is really helpful. And then I would, I would recommend asking them to submit it early. You know, the, the application is due January 27th. Faculty are busy, instructors are busy, everyone's busy. And even if they're very committed to supporting you, it's it's easy to have a really um, hectic or rushed start to the, the spring semester. So I would ask them if it's possible, if they can submit the letter of recommendation, they'll receive a prompt. They're not giving it to you. It's going to go directly to the online application. You'll just enter their name and email address, and then they'll do that separately. But I would ask them to submit it at the beginning of January, even mid-January, but ahead of time. So in case there's a delay, it's still submitted in time. And this is what I already mentioned there. I'm just going to go through these final slides and you can contact me separately, send an email or learn this information on our website, which I can provide here in, on this next slide. But basically, what are some helpful resources for next steps? You can go to our website and you can click on this top section for FLAS and there's all the information, it should be all the information I've provided, even if it's not at length as I've described it um, out loud today, or some of the longer blurb descriptions. You'll also have my email and you'll learn about more FLAS information sessions this fall. You can also schedule a separate appointment, but a lot of the frequently asked questions will be there. We do not workshop your statements of purpose, or I do not in my role in our office, but you can go to the University of Utah Writing Center. They're a great resource, and I definitely recommend that. Here's a link for the registrar for your transcripts, and as, as I mentioned, here's my email address so we can answer questions you may have. And I'll just finish by saying, in my office, I coordinate multiple other scholarships, many of which support learning abroad opportunities. There's a scholarship called the D Foundation Study Abroad Scholarship. And that scholarship will be specifically the one that we're able to award for majors in international studies or in the Department of World Languages and Cultures. You can apply for that D Foundation Study Abroad Scholarship. There's also a scholarship if you're studying Japanese called the Totoki um, memorial scholarship. If you're studying China, Chinese related 
coursework in general or, or Mandarin, you will be able to apply for a scholarship we have called the Rosalind Powell Memorial Scholarship. And there's another scholarship for general international learning abroad experiences or, or study abroad. What you might, anything you might be doing internationally, you'll, you'll, you'll explain that to the committee. And that's called the Bradley Parker Memorial Scholarship. So there's multiple, if you go, I'm gonna go back here real quick, but if you go to the same website, ias.utah.edu, you can also click on other scholarships besides FLAS and find more information. But here's some more, um, offices and centers to keep it in mind that are really helpful and other opportunities you might consider. And it's been great to meet you. I know that I spoke fast. I said a lot. I showed a bunch of slides. But if you're if you're listening to this and have more information, I'd be happy to help if I can. And in general, if you end up applying for this scholarship opportunity or others, I'm wishing you the best in your studies. And just a, a final reminder here for the dates I mentioned, but the application is an online application unless you aren't able to access the system, meaning you're not yet a University of Utah student with the CIS um, or a UNID login, you can contact our office and we'll provide a PDF application. Otherwise, you'll be able to do it all online through the online application. And it's due January 27th, and that will be for next summer, 2023, and the following ac academic year, 2023, 2024. All right, well, thank you very much for your time. I'm gonna stop sharing there and